Hi, this is Vanessa, and here is Azin is for you. Indonesia president travels to Cianjur after earthquake and promises compensation to victims. Indonesian President Joko Widodo traveled to Cianjur to encourage rescuers and city government to hand out compensation to the victims and their families. Untuk nantinya rumah-rumah yang rusak berat, the government will provide assistance to those whose homes suffered heavy, light, or moderate damage. Pemerintah akan memberikan bantuan. Joko Widodo asked authorities to prioritize the operation and to rescue the victims first. Widodo stressed that the new houses to build must be able to resist the earthquake tremors. The government will compensate the houses damaged by the tremors, ranging about 10 million rupiahs to 50 million rupiahs, or about 637.27 US dollars to 3186.02 US dollars. Local officials said that the toll of Monday's earthquake in western Indonesia has reached 268 and 151 others are still missing. The head of the National Disaster Management Agency said the 5.6 magnitude quake which hit Indonesia's West Java province also left 1,083 people injured and forced 58,362 others to flee homes as the tremors of the quake destroyed over 21,000 houses and infrastructure facilities. At least 13,000 people displaced after a quake in West Java. At least 13,000 people have been forced out of their homes and into evacuation camps in West Java of Indonesia after 5.6 magnitude quake jolted the province. The Meteorological, Climatological and Geophysical Agency said 21 minutes past 13 hours Jakarta time with the epicenter at 10 km southwest of the district of Cianjur in West Java and a depth of 10 km. So far, 268 people have been confirmed killed in a devastating earthquake while more than 150 are still missing and the death toll is expected to rise as rescuers continue to search the rubble. Some evacuees said that they did not experience any major physical damage, but they are emotionally traumatized and they are afraid to go back home because of further aftershocks from this earthquake, so they choose to stay in tents. Hospitals in Cianjur are overwhelmed by the number of patients in need of help. Hundreds are injured and many are in critical condition. Indonesian President Joko Widodo also said his government will help to rebuild the hundreds of homes that were destroyed. The president said, mostly important, these houses need to be rebuilt with proper infrastructure and will be earthquake resistant. China ready to help Indonesia after natural disaster in Cianjur. Foreign Minister Spokesman Cao Lizian at the press briefing in Beijing said, China is ready to provide necessary support and assistance for Indonesia's disaster relief. President Xi Jinping already sent a message of condolences to Indonesian President Joko Widodo yesterday. China and Indonesia are friendly neighbors. The Chinese side is willing to provide necessary support and assistance for Indonesia's disaster relief. We believe the Indonesian people will surely overcome the disaster and rebuild their homeland at an early date. A 5.6 magnitude earthquake hit Indonesia's West Java province, killing at least 268 people, with 151 still missing. The earthquake also left 1,083 people injured and displaced 58,362 residents. China and ASEAN meeting in Cambodia to strengthen defense cooperation. Wei Fenghe said, "Just yesterday, the Chinese Foreign Minister announced the creation of the Defense Cooperation Agency." Chinese State Councilor and Defense Minister Wei Fenghe delivered a speech at the 9th ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Place in northwest Cambodia's Siem Reap province. The 9th ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Place discussed and adopted a joint declaration on defense cooperation to strengthen solidarity for a harmonized security. He added that under the leadership of the CPC Central Committee, with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, China will strive to promote Chinese modernization and the goal of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation will surely be realized. Wei said China has always been committed to strengthening stability and providing positive energy to the world. 
the Chinese military is confident in and capable of defeating all invading enemies. Pointing out that the security situation in the Asia-Pacific region remains stable, but with warring factors and the defense departments of various countries should maintain Asian centrality, implement the Global Security Initiative, seek to focus on practical cooperation and work together to build a strong regional security barrier. During the meeting, we met respectively with the defense ministers of a number of countries, including the United States, Vietnam, Laos, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea as well as with Russia's Deputy Defense Minister, exchanging views on promoting military cooperation and issues on common concern. Anwar Ibrahim becomes new Prime Minister in Malaysia. Malaysia's Anwar Ibrahim was sworn in as Prime Minister, capping a three-decade political journey from a protege of veteran leader Mahathir Mohamad to protest leader, a prisoner convicted of sodomy, and opposition leader. And for me in particular... Anwar took his oath of office in front of the constitutional monarch king, Al-Sultan Abdullah, who appointed the 70-year-old politician after speaking to several lawmakers following a political deadlock. Anwar and his rival, former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin, failed to win a majority election, resulting in five days of unprecedented post-election crisis. Anwar's appointment could usher a new stability with Muhyiddin, who challenged him to prove his majority in Parliament. Anwar takes over at a challenging time, the economy is slowing and the country is divided, after a tight election that pitted Anwar's progressive coalition against Muhyiddin's mostly conservative ethnic Malay Muslim alliance. Activists protest against Hadis' visit to Philippines. Dozens of activists held a rally near the presidential palace in Manila to protest against United States Vice President Kamala Harris' visit to the Southeast Asian country. We also are against the war mongering of the United States for the sake of asserting it's a hegemony in this part of the world. We don't want our, our country to be used as the uh, springboard or launching pad of the wars of the United States against China or any other country. We want a peaceful Philippines and a peaceful region. Police rushed to block the protesters from approaching a gate leading to the palace and kept a watchful eye as the activists held their protest a few hundred meters from the intended location. After meeting the Philippines' President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Harris said the relationship between the two countries was long and enduring, an American commitment unwavering. The United States Vice President, whose three-day trip to the Philippines includes a stop on the island of Palawan on the edge of the South China Sea, will also reaffirm Washington's support for a 2016 International Tribunal ruling that invalidated China's expansive claim in the disputed waterway. One person dies after a car bomb explodes in southern Thailand. Oh. A police official said at least one person was killed when a car bomb exploded inside a police compound in southern Thailand. The police in a statement said a single perpetrator dressed as a police officer parked the car filled with explosives inside the compound prior to the blast. Director of the Naratiwat Rajanagarendra Hospital, Pormpasit Jantra said at least 29 people were treated in hospital for wounds, among them police officers and civilians. Local television footage showed black smoke blowing from the low-rise compound and paramedics removing a body in a body bag. No one has yet claimed responsibility for the incident. Thank you everyone. Have a nice weekdays ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. We will see you again.